यस्त्यक्त्वारोपमाद्यम् प्रभवते जगतः अनेकधा अनुग्रहाय प्रक्षीण क्लेशराशे वेशम वेशधरह अनेक वक्त्र सुभोगे सर्वज्ञान प्रसूति ही भोजग परिकरह प्रीत ये यस्य नित्यम् देवो हि शाह सवो व्यात सीता विमलतनो हो योगदो योगयुक्ता योगेन चित्तस्य पदे न वचाम मलम शरीरस्य च वैद्यके न योपाकरोतम प्रवरम मोनीनाम पतंजलिम प्राणजलि रानतोस्मि आबाहु पुरुषाकारम शंखचक्रासिधारिनम सहस्रशिरसम श्वेतम Pranamami Patanjalim Shremate Anantaya Nagarajaya Namo Namaha Patanjala Mahabhashya Charaka Pratisam Skritai Manova Kaya Doshanam Hartre Ahipataye Namaha Bhashya Krit Sutra Krit Chapi निर्मलंतम् सुरोपिनम् ध्यातारम् श्रीपतेर नित्यम् पतंजलिम् नमः यहम् So, <clears throat> very good afternoon to all of you. We are in the second chapter of the Yoga Sutra called the Sadhana Pada. And uh, we are in, a, in the position of where Patanjali is defining what is called the Kleshas and how to deal with them will follow soon after. And uh, we have talked about the first four kleshas, avidya, asmita, raga, and dvesha in the last days. Today comes perhaps the most strong and intense of all the kleshas that is called abhinivesha that Patanjali is presenting here. Svarasavahi Vidoshopi Samarudhaha Abhinivesha 
What is so fascinating about this sutra is Patanjali is not defining really what is Sabinivesha. He just talks about it as how it is existing and how it is a matter of fact to all of us. The word Abhinivesha is translated normally as fear. And fear is one of the strongest kleshas we have because fear is sometimes making us take wrong decisions and sometimes is preventing us from taking the right decisions. And I think both of them are dangerous situations to us and it leads to suffering. The Sometimes when we don't take the right decisions or sometimes when we take the wrong decisions because of fear, it can only lead to suffering. It cannot lead us to pleasure or happiness or expansion. And that is why this is a very deep rooted klesha that we have and it's very important that we spend some time to understand it. What Patanjali is presenting has interesting dimension. Svarasa Vahi. It's not possible really for us to always control or manage our fears because fear has its own power. Svarasa Vahi. It flows out of its own nature. The nature of fear is to flow, it's to arise. Fear is not something that can actually be suppressed or stopped. It's coming from a very long time. That's why it has its own power. It has its own momentum. Acharyas like Vyasa are explaining that fear is coming because there is an accumulation of fear from our past generations or past lives that we have experienced or our ancestors have experienced and that is passed on through what is called samskara and vasanas. That's why he says svarasa vahi means it is very deeply rooted in our samskaras and vasanas and that's why it has its own fear, it has its own flow. Most of us, we are not even conscious that fear is controlling us. That's how powerful it is. It's almost like a spirit has taken over us when fear takes over. Something has taken over and we cannot really control. It just operates on its own power. It's so deep and so powerful. It's, that's why the word Svarasa Vahi is very important. It has Svasya Rasam Svarasam. Svarasena Vahati Svarasa Vahi. Fear by its nature has a particular essence that we carry and we all have that which is very unique to us. If you think about it, we are not all afraid of the same things. Somebody is afraid of a spider, somebody may be afraid of a mosquito, somebody may be afraid of an elephant, somebody may be afraid of human beings, somebody is afraid of a dog, we all have different phobias, different fears. So that's what is Svarasa Vahi. It has its own power. It has its own unique definitions. Each individual has their own fears. We don't necessarily all have the same fears. Some people have fear of public speaking. Some people don't have this fear of public speaking. And now this comes from our experiences before when we were children maybe, or maybe it's coming from <coughs> parents that we have inherited. So that's where fear has its own inertia, it oh, its own movement. That's why fear is often uncontrollable and fear sometimes comes even when we are asleep. It's one of those kleshas that is still operating in our sleep. When you think about it, you may not have 
avidya during sleep because your mind is kind of switching off. You may not have ego during your sleep because when you are asleep, you don't know whether you are a man or a woman, whether you are a king or a poor person or whether you are handicapped or healthy. When you are sleeping, that disappears. So ego does not exist during sleep. Now raga and dvesha does not exist during sleep. Now we are talking about deep sleep, not sleep which is full of dreams. Please remember there's difference between <clears throat> what is called Swapna Sahita Nidra and Swapna Rahita Nidra. Dreams are not the deep state of sleep. But even in the deepest state of sleep, fear is still, the status of fear is still active. See many people today, they have their WhatsApp status offline, online, etc. Fear, you cannot switch off and say it's offline, even during your sleep. That's why when something happens in the sleep, like let's say your heart starts beating in a bad way, or you have a, some kind of reaction, the body immediately goes into that mode that because the fear button is still switched on. And it's a very big philosophical debate whether the sw switch off button for fear can ever exist. That's why Patanjali says, Swarasa Vahi. Its nature is that it's continuing to flow. And what Patanjali is saying is, Vidushaha Api. Vidushaha Api Samarudaha. It is deeply rooted even for very learned people, very wise people. Great Acharyas have fear. They may have enlightenment, but it doesn't mean they are free from fear. They have clarity. It doesn't mean that they have free from fear. Fear continues to operate even for learned people. There may be different kinds of fear. I remember my grandfather in the last years of his life, he had fear. He was very afraid that all the wealth of knowledge that he had accumulated will die with him. And I remember as a young boy hearing he would be screaming to my father's name, he would scream my father's name, Chinana, Chinana, because that is how my father was called by my grandfather and family members. And he would be screaming because he would be afraid that if he did not pass on these teachings, this will go on. So my father would have to come at odd times to take classes with my grandfather in the last years of his life because my grandfather was having this fear that he didn't have enough time to pass on what he had accumulated over his lifetime. So even learned people have fear. It may be different fear. Maybe they don't have fear of death. Maybe they don't have fear of spiders. But they probably have other kinds of fear. In modern psychology, we are always told that fear is one of the root cause for all of our emotional problems. And when you look at it, it's often coming down to fear. Why do we have an ego? Ego is a mechanism that is built on fear. And that's why the word is very fascinating. The word is very fascinating. Abhini Vesha. Vesha literally means a costume. Now, some people wear a costume. A clown in the circus is wearing a particular costume. A movie actor or actress, she wears a costume. So, we wear a costume. So, Vesha means a costume or a dress that we are wearing. Nivesha, Nitaram Vesha. We don't ever take this costume off. It is a costume that is continuously existing. The clown in the circus, he wears the costume when he is performing. 
And when his performance is over and he goes to the family, he removes that costume. He is not wearing that costume in his house. Hopefully not. The same way an actor or an actress or a theater performer or a dancer, they wear a costume during their performance. But then they remove that costume. But there is one costume that is continuous. That is fear. Fear is a costume that we wear that is continuous. Abhi nivesha. Abhi means intimate in this context. So fear is an intimate costume that we wear that we don't ever remove. That we don't ever remove. We are removing other costumes. You know, we change our clothes, so we have to remove this and put a new clothes. We are doing that. But fear is something that we are always carrying wherever we go. We don't let fear in the closet, in our wardrobe. Fear does not have a place in our wardrobe. It comes with us. That's why it's called Abhini Vesha. It's a costume that we are continuously wearing no matter where we go, no matter whether we are awake or asleep. Even during our sleep, the costume stays with us. The shield. It's almost like uh, <clears throat> an armor that a warrior is wearing. The warrior is wearing a protective co costume called the armor during the fight. Then at some point he has to remove it. We don't remove it. And in modern era, this fear is becoming more and more stronger. And that's why the costume is becoming more and more heavier. Now think about this. If you are carrying this heavy costume all the time, it's going to be having a burden on us. That's why we have diseases like chronic fatigue. We are too tired carrying it. It's not making any sense because we are keeping on carrying it with us all the time. It takes a lot of energy away from us because it's heavy. And that's why we remove, we can't remove it. We become exhausted and collapse. So in some ways, fear is a very deep structure that we carry. And most modern psychologists, they always attribute many of our emotional problems to fear. And that's why they say fear is the foundation of most psychological problems. Patanjali does not stop there. He says, why do we have fear? Fear is not necessarily the foundation. There is something more deeper that is what brings us fear. Fear is almost like a software that is programmed into our system because of something else. That's he explains in the fourth chapter. Tasam anaditvancha ashisho nityatvat. Ashishaha nityatvat. Asha, a desire. The deep desire of all sentient beings is the desire to be permanent. Nityatvat, nityatatva. The deep desire of all of us is the desire to be permanent. We don't plan our life that we are going to die. We plan our life that we are going to be there. Sometimes I see people, old people, making investments and this and that, as if they are going to be there in the next 20 years, 30 years, because the deep wish of all conscious beings is the desire to remain eternal. Nityatvat. And that is why there is a programming that is given to that conscious being. This program is called fear. Okay, you are not going to be permanent because you are living in a body that is impermanent. So, you want, you have to have some means to sustain it for longevity. Therefore, I am giving you the gift of fear so that you use it appropriately so that you can survive for as long as possible. But then what happens? We, instead of using the fear, at moments where we need it, we are using it on a continuous basis, on a daily basis. Every moment has become a survival moment. 
Every moment has become a survival moment. That's what modern society has come to. You want to wake up and wash your, brush your teeth. You want to first have filtered water because the water coming from the tap is not clean. So already you are afraid. Oh my God, I have to brush my teeth with filtered water, the security system. Then you want to have a bath. There is a security system in the heater that it cannot go beyond this temperature. Otherwise you get burned. So there is another security system. Then you come and check your email while you are drinking your coffee. There's password you have to put. That's another security system. So there's so many systems we are putting in place because of fear. So fear has become an existential problem, existential phenomena. And that's why our armors are so up. When we are in relationship with a partner, with a friend, we have fear because, oh, what if she hurts me? What if he hurts me? Sometimes we forget that the foundation is love. Many often we put the foundation as fear and that's why it doesn't work. We choose partners based on fear. Oh, this partner will make me feel secure. This partner I don't want to choose because he or she makes me feel insecure. No, that's not really the proper platform. We have to choose a platform based on security, based on something else which is called love or affection, not based on insecurity and that's what our tendency is to. And that because I explained to you last time, Dukkham is sticky. It wants to remember Dukkham and that's why fear gets always activated because we don't want to let go of our Dukkham. So that's why the more we are holding on to our suffering, the more the fear button gets turned on and becomes more and more powerful and it interferes with so many of our decisions. And this is why Patanjali is talking that fear is there because of this wish to be eternal. Every one of us, we want to be eternal. We are, that's why we are continuing, uh, we are given this phenomena called reproduction because the consciousness wants to extend its lifespan because it says, okay, I don't really think I will be safe in this body. I will extend my consciousness into another body so we create that kind of lineage. That's why in India, people are talking so much about lineage. Asian countries, they talk about lineage. They're saying, oh, we have to have the continuity of the lineage, otherwise the consciousness gets cut. Now, that may or may not be an accurate way of interpreting things, but that's basically what is driven from the concept of fear. In my view, fear is what creates asmita. Fear is what creates dvesha. Fear is what creates all these things. Many of the kleshas are coming from fear and avidya. Avidya and fear are kind of like the two extremes. That's why I feel Patanjali has presented this in that order. We start with avidya, we end with fear. In, in the middle, we have all the other kleshas. It's like the boundaries. Avidya and Abhinivesha are kind of the boundaries within which all the other kleshas are manifesting. And the avidya is that we don't, we are not permanent. That's why Patanjali talks about nitya anitya in the sutra of avidya. And the fear is coming because of the desire to be eternal. And that is why we have these two as extremes. That's why Patanjali is saying that there is, this is so deep rooted because that we want to be eternal is not coming from conscious mind. It's not even coming from our subconscious mind. It is coming from our consciousness itself. Acharya, Krishna Acharya says, we normally have three kinds of fear. Abhiniveshaha trivida bhayaha, asha bhayam, roga bhayam, mrityu bhayancha. 
Abhinivesha are three kinds of fear. Asha bhayam. Asha bhayam means fear because of some kind of desires or some kind of hope or some kind of expectations. Like for example, you are many Indian mothers, they expect their children to get good grades in the school. In the, in, so there is in the 10th grade and the 12th grade, there is what is called very important examinations that determine the children to go to the university, which university they will go is determined by how much grade the people get. Now, the mothers have an expectation that their children should do well. And therefore, they have a fear that is coming out of that, oh, will my child do well, will it not do well, will it do well? And therefore, they take very stressful behavior towards the children. Study, 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 they are pushing sometimes. And sometimes that doesn't work because the children get overwhelmed and run away and, and they fail in the exam because the pressure is too much. This is what is called Asha Bhayam. There is a desire. That, that desire is creating fear. Many people want relationships to work and therefore they get afraid in relationship and try to behave based on fear and therefore they behave differently from what they really are so that they want this relationship to work and when we try to do that again it will not work because we are not ourselves at some point the disconnection will happen from ourself so we have to be ourselves and we have to maybe communicate and clarify the differences rather than try to alter our behavior based on fear when people invest money in the stock market they are expecting that it will work well. So they get anxious when the stock market is going up and down. This is fear because of expectation of their investment to succeed. Nobody is investing in a stock market to fail. Hopefully, otherwise they are a bit strange. People are investing in stock market because they want their money to grow, not to collapse. They want their money to grow, not collapse. This is what is called Asha Bhayam. Fear because there is an expectation, there is a desire. Then there is what is called Roga Bhayam. Roga means disease. Now disease can create a lot of fear. People are afraid of disease. People are afraid when, of getting diseases. People are afraid when disease occurs. Sometimes certain diseases are so scary when people tell when the doctor tells the patient you have cancer immediately people feel as if a nuclear bomb has been thrown at them they're so afraid suddenly they are afraid and it's not that cancer came at that moment they had cancer before the test just shows now that you it's just confirmation of what is already existing but before they didn't have fear but the moment the doctor says a diagnosis, suddenly it's like a bomb. This is what is called Roga Bhayam. Sometimes a disease incapacitates a person. So that creates anxiety, that creates fear. Oh, will I be able to go to job? Will I be able to do my responsibility? So sometimes the disease is creating fear. That is what is called Roga Bhayam. Finally, there is what is called Mrityu Bhayam, fear of death. There are very few people who are actually not afraid of death. And sometimes they say that they are not afraid of death, but that is in a particular mind structure, but deep inside their subconscious and conscious structures, the consciousness structure, that fear programming is there. That fear programming is there. I have seen quite a few people die and in the last parts of their life when they are confronted with death in the, when it's coming, when it's imminent, it's coming in a few days or a few weeks, they actually get afraid. They, you can see the fear in their eyes. The only moments where you will not feel this fear in their eyes is actually the last moments when they are passing. 
And there is a logical explanation for this from the yoga point of view. I think I have talked about this in another context somewhere else. Our mind is not always operating with the same kind of mind. We have different mind structures. We have what is called manas mind. We have a smita mind. We have the buddhi mind. We have the chitta mind. We have the pratyaya mind. And we have the sattva mind. Only certain kinds of mind can experience fear. That is buddhi, ahankara, asmita and manas. The pratyaya mind, the sattva mind, they don't experience fear. They don't experience fear. They are a bit numb to fear. And the pratyaya mind is not always in operation. The prana has to be flowing a certain way for the pratyaya mind to become active. That's why when we do certain techniques of pranayama and make the prana very efficient, the pratyaya mind becomes dominant and then we are fit for meditation. The only time when, the only other time or two times, one is dream and the other is time of death, that pratyaya becomes active. Because at that time, there's so little prana in the human body that it's withdrawing from all the body organs. And only subtle sukshma sharira is still uh, active. And when the sukshma sharira is active, the mind structure gets this efficient flow of prana and the pratyaya mind illuminates itself, it becomes active the fear disappears. And it's the last moments before natural death when this happens. And that's why if you see, people will glow before they pass away. The fear will disappear. The face, the body, everything will relax before they pass away naturally. This is in a natural scenario of death, not in an accident, not in a traumatic situation, etc. And this I've seen myself with the passing of my father when I was there in the last moments of his life, in the last few minutes and hours, this was what was happening. There was brightness, there was no fear. All great people experience fear. All great people. There is nobody devoid of fear. But fear is disappearing when these subtle mind structures are active. That's why yogis were focused on generating their practices, the prana in such a way, that the prana generated would be so efficient that those mind structures that cannot experience fear gets activated. Pratyaya mind, sattva mind, etc. And that's why when you analyze Yoga Sutra carefully, these are the mind states that exist when dhyanam, samadhi, kaivalyam, etc. are being talked about. Other mind structures, they cannot stay without fear. That's why it's very interesting because if you have fear, you cannot be in dhyanam or samadhi. If you are in dhyanam or samadhi, you don't have fear. It's mutually exclusive. It's like it's one can exist, the other will not exist. It's kind of like a seesaw. Whereas if fear is existing, this will not happen. That's why we cannot say in the modern era where we are all struggling with fear, I'd like to hold on to my fears, but I want to experience samadhi as well. It's almost like we have to leave fear outside in the meditation room and start the meditative process. It's almost metaphoric that we have to let go of the fear some way or the other, either through practices where the prana becomes so efficient that these subtle structures become active, that fear disappears automatically. Or to replace with the antidote of fear. There is an antidote for fear. Like, you know, there is an antidote for poison. There is an antidote for fear. That antidote is called Shraddha. When there is faith, that is the best medicine for removing fear. Faith and fear 
cannot exist in the same room in the same time. It's almost like sometimes you have two people who cannot exist in the same room in the same time. When one is there, the other doesn't want to be there. It's like that. When faith is there, fear will automatically run away. When faith, fear is there, faith disappears. Both cannot be in the same moment at the same time. This partial thing does not really work. That's why the yogis were saying, okay, we cannot remove fear, so let's embrace Shraddha. Let's embrace Shraddha so that fear slowly takes the back door away. Whereas if we are trying to fight with fear, we will lose the battle because fear is so strong. So in some ways we cannot remove fear. People are always telling me, asking me, how do I remove fear? How do I remove fear? You cannot really remove that fear because it's a deeply programmed phenomena. We only try to replace it with another phenomena that becomes active at that time. It's almost like uh, you can't remove life itself from us, we will collapse. The same way we cannot remove fear from our life completely because that will not allow us to actually survive. Fear is very important for our survival. But that we allow fear to dominate, that is the klesha. And that is why Patanjali is saying we have to be careful with fear because on the one hand, it's very important for our survival, but on the other hand, it's very dangerous. It's kind of like you can live without it, you can live with it. This is the potency of fear, and this is what Patanjali is trying to explain in the Sutra. Svarasavahi vidushopi samarudhaha Abhinivishaha. Thank you, my friends. Namaste.